right, welcome to part four. We're going to get right into it. Um, first, create a cube, and then you're going to want to move the cube to the location of the head on the reference image. On this cube, you're going to want to make the subdivision width, height, and depth of 2. Be sure to have symmetry activated, because once you're done with the subdivisions, you're going to begin moving the corners of the cube to make the cube look as cylindrical not cylindrical, but spherical as possible. The reason we're doing this is because once we're done moving the corners, we will do a smooth operation on this cube, and it will create a very spherical object with quad faces. Um, it's very important to have quad faces because they work best with animation, and um, the body has quad faces, so when we combine both objects, we're going to have a perfect combination with vertices, and we won't have any extra vertices that we need to create or um, accommodate for. All right, as you can see, the cube is somewhat cylindrical, and now we will begin with the smooth operation on the entire cube. Now you can see it has become a spherical object and we will combine both of these objects together. Now I'm counting the faces on the neck to know how many faces I have to delete from the head so that the combination is perfect. I had eight faces on the neck so I'm going to delete eight faces on the head. After deleting those faces, I'm going to want to combine the objects together and then target weld them. <clears throat> the combine is under mesh and the target weld can either be found in the top bar or um, under uh, mesh tools. And if you have symmetry on, you can do half of it and it will do the whole head for you. But if you don't have symmetry, then you might have to go all the way around the head. <clears throat> Alright, so now that we have that connected, um, we can see that the head is not exactly in the right place. So we're going to move it by drag selecting on multiple ver vertices and moving them to match the reference image as best they already do. <clears throat> I felt it was easier to move the center vertices in perspective mode um, because in side view it is very hard to tell the difference between the center and uh, just another vertice so um, I did a lot of my shaping of the head in perspective mode when you stretch faces out of the um, geometry you're gonna want to make sure that um, that there are edges um, in between the big spaces otherwise if you try to animate that um, that part of the geometry there may not be the bend you want or expect um, so you, the more edges the better the animation but if you also want to keep it low poly you just want to use what edges you have without creating extra. It's always good to look in the side view um, for perspective as to how you're matching up with the reference image um, and again you do not have to match up with the reference image it is just there as a 
guide. So I've noticed that there are some faces that I forgot to delete off the neck before I attached the head. So now I have to go back in there and delete those faces as you see I'm doing right now. And they're gone. Alright, now back to shaping my dog's head. Once you feel you've got the head shaped as best um, you can, then you can begin um, moving the vertices to accommodate for the ear that you will be extruding here in a minute. <clears throat> Now for that ear, I selected both of the faces and I did an extrusion. Then with those two faces selected, I rotated them and began to shape them with the ear as the reference image um, displays. And also doing it in perspective view how I presume this sort of dog's ear would look. Now that the ear is done, we're going to add the final touch, and which is a tail. I use the multi-cut tool to add more vertices to this square that I'm going to be extruding in a second. And I did break symmetry, so as you can see, I'm deleting the faces on the front view, and I will be re I will be mirroring the geometry to get my symmetry back. Mirror is under the mesh menu, and for some reason my screen went dark. Um, but if it's too hard to see what's happening, I just extrude the faces of the tail, and I scale the faces that I extruded so that they, um, so that the tail comes to a small point. And then I add multiple edge loops on this tail so that I can make the tail cylindrical. And so that it will bend um, properly when I animate it. 